So if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing that you are a millennial like me. And today we're going to take a look and see just how bad us millennials have it in the world today. Welcome to the Mind of Moon, dogs. Jump into it. So here's the video from uh, George Skier on TikTok that uh, went around like wildfire amongst millennials across the platform. Let's take a listen to sh uh, see what she has to say and kind of talk about what's going on here. Does anyone else feel like they're absolutely fucking drowning financially as a single 29 year old woman i just i have three jobs what and i'm still fucking struggling and i'm just getting myself farther and farther into credit card debt because i don't have enough after the first of the month to avoid using it hold on already out of the gate i'm really confused how do you have three jobs can barely p uh, pay your rent on the first and, and it's leading you to run up your credit card debt. Okay, already there's like a, a, a waving red flag in my mind. Is it just me? Let me know down below because that, that don't sound right. Three jobs and you still can't, you know, like afford your basic uh, living expenses? Something does not sound right. Let's keep on going and see maybe if we can get some more clues what's going on here. And maybe it's just a her thing. It just isn't working. Full-time job. <sighs> Not doing it. Got a second job. It's it's barely doing it. The third job. <sighs> Hit or miss. If I even get paid on time. I feel like I'm drowning. And I don't know... I don't know what to do. I don't know if any industry is doing well right now. I used to be a server. I used to have all this cash every night whenever I would work, walk out with cash. And I don't have that anymore. And I don't even know if they're doing okay <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, I have seriously considered quitting my full-time good job to go back to serving. Because at least I can have... I can just like, use, use my personality and try to get more money than minimum wage or what an entry-level job pays people nowadays. It's fucking sick. All right, so she has a full-time job, and she just said she's willing to leave it to go back to serving. Now, obviously, we don't know what's going on with that job, what, it, what kind of work she's doing, maybe what they're paying her. But that just seems very odd that you work a full-time job somewhere <clears throat> and you can't even afford off of that work alone to pay for your expenses, right? So you get a second job. I understand that. I, I know that, that sometimes people have to get two jobs to make it work. But for her to say that she needs three, here's what I'm already thinking so far, right? I'm starting to wonder if she's living outside her means, Okay. I'm already looking on the inside, probably some kind of an SUV vehicle. Don't know what kind it is or whatever, but it's an SUV. What kind of a place is she living in? Is it uh, a place that is beyond your means? The reality is, is a lot of times we as people in general want to live a certain lifestyle. But guess what? Your bank account ain't really built for you to live that lifestyle. And some people will force it and put themselves into situations potentially like hers. We don't know for sure. I'm, 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 I have a sneaky suspicion that this could be the case that she's living beyond her means. She might be living in uh, a home versus probably renting to save a little bit. You know, if it's cheaper, uh, she may have a car note that's well beyond what she needs to be paying based off of her, her, her income level. You know what I mean? She might be spending 40% of her of her take-home income on the car note. Like, there's a lot. You got to run the numbers here. The The reality is a lot of people aren't good with budgeting. A lot of people aren't good with, with being financially disciplined and taking the appropriate steps to avoid falling into, you know, financial hardships. It doesn't make sense that you would be working three jobs single, at 29, it's not like she has kids. She has no other responsibilities other than take care of her damn self as a adult, which is what all of us have to do. And she's over here going through it. 
I, I would really want to be like, let's look at what's going on here. The spending got to be something. Something's off. Something is off. And when something is off, I don't know that you have the grounds to come out and, and complain about your situation because you're not min maxing your finances, you know, working with what you got. People are playing a bigger hand than, than what they got to actually play. <sighs> Try to call my mom. She didn't answer. Snapchat my friends about this because I just needed a vent, but I just feel like I'm drowning. You probably are. It's like, okay, do I just find a boyfriend so I can split everything with him? Like, sorry, like, I just, I'm too stubborn and I just want what I want and I don't, I just there can't it is. do that or be that way. Um, there it is. She just wants what she wants. See, the clues come out in the videos. The clue, they, like, people will tell on themselves throughout it. You let them talk, you give them the microphone and they talk long enough, the clues will come out. She wants what she wants. She she even contemplating, let me get a man just so he can go 50-50 kind of, kind of a thing. When I get the vibe that she's she wants a man to do all of it for her, provide for her. Okay, that's whatever. Let's not get into that uh, realm right now. But the point is, is she said very clearly she wants what she wants. Further leads me to believe that she's living a lifestyle that she, you know that she wants, but that her bank account can't support. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's it's all starting to unfold right here as she's having like this little breakdown in the car. So yeah, friends, I might say no to your weddings. I might say, and I have said no to bachelorette parties, and I just can't. I just fucking can't. Um, I mean, that's a good. But is it anyone else, or am I just a dumb bitch with money? Because I not I used to not be. My credit used to be fucking phenomenal. Credit card bill paid it all off every single time. It's not like that. It can't be like that anymore. Oh my God, this is so long. Yo, people in generally, in my experience, just aren't the best. A lot of people, and I'll be even, I'll go even further than that. A lot of women, and this is personal experience, a lot of women I've known have never been good with money. A lot of times they don't have a real concept of what money is. Uh, and so they blow through it. I know so many women have gone into debt, running up credit cards. Because they don't have a concept of like saving, investing, uh, you know, being disciplined with your money and your finances, budgeting, and they end up in these situations just like this. I think now that we're almost at the end of this video, two minutes and 30 se uh, 33 seconds in, is that she is her own enemy in this. Not to say that there aren't millennials out there that are legitimately going through some financial hardships, despite the fact that they are doing all the right things that they need to do, you know, tightening up on their budgets, uh, not foolishly spending, working multiple jobs, uh, and living in places that 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 are better suited for their income levels. Uh, you know, maybe even gave up a car, or don't have a car note, instead of taking public transportation. Just doing all the things they need to do to save more and be able to thrive. I think this is a very different case. <sighs> And do I know it's fucked up? I know it's fucked up. Okay. All right. This feels a little bit better. This feels a little bit better already. I'm not going to lie. Just want to know if anyone else is like me right now. Or if I'm just like the dumb bitch. Damn. Fuck. I mean, you said it, not me. Because something's just not adding up here. So we scroll through some of the comments here. Look, I'm 33. I'm about to sue my parents for bringing me here. You get a lot of <laughs> a lot of people actually sympathizing with her. 32, living on my own, make six figures, and I'm still living paycheck to paycheck. Balance transfers save me on credit card debt. This is a, this is wild. This is you know like this comment right here. She's 32 on her own, no kids, no family, and you got six figures. That the math is not mathing. Like I'm starting to really see a trend that millennials. And this is crazy, are just reckless with their money. How are you single with no kids, six figures, living paycheck to paycheck? You are living outside of your means. You're trying to live in that penthouse downtown somewhere in the sky on the skyline. Uh, you got a, a car that you don't really need to have. And then you cry about living paycheck to paycheck because you want to live the aesthetic life. You want to live the certain life. I'm not saying that you shouldn't want to have these things. What I'm trying to say here, people, 
is that you got to always live within your means. And if you don't have the opportunity to live it right now, what you can do is start um, tightening up, be, be a little bit more frugal, stack your money up, build it up. And then once you've accumulated it, then you can start moving in to do the things that you want to do. Uh, too many people are living in a fantasy world. You know, I want this, this, this. <clears throat> and so they, they throw themselves into those situations, but they can't financially support it all. And then they become so far in debt, living paycheck to paycheck. It's actually crazy. Here's another comment. I feel you. I'm 32, working finance, making decent money. No kids, no luxury apartment. I live paycheck to paycheck. You're not alone. alone. Stay strong. Again, you know, what is happening here when you specifically are a millennial that has no children, uh, no other responsibilities other than taking care of yourself, and as this person said, works in finance. Now, you know, there's a lot of different areas you work in finance. You can be like finance adjacent. You know, it's not like you're, uh, you know, you could be working as a administrative side of it, which is different than actually being like a someone in finance that's like doing the big stuff where you make like a lot of money. So we don't know particularly, but you're in the finance industry. Generally, tend to make better money in that kind of an industry, but and no luxury apartment. How how are you living paycheck to paycheck? It doesn't make sense. I love to see people maybe expand on this and, and explain how they're making decent money, good money, and still struggling. It doesn't make sense. My only thought here is people are just not taking the necessary financial steps to set themselves up for success. Is it, This is an important thing. I also noticed the trend as I'm scrolling through these comments that by and large, there's a lot of women that are relating to her video. What does that kind of lead me to believe, as I said earlier on, which is women don't tend to be great with money. By and large, I'm saying every woman, but a lot of women tend to not be good financially with the money. They're good at spending it, but they're not the best with, you know, uh, budgeting, uh, saving, investing, and all the other things to, you know, build your money up or preserve it, save it for a rainy day, you know, all these kinds of things. I mean, these comments are flooded with women all in agreement. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, going crazy. It's here. Another one at almost 29. This is the brokest I've been since I graduated college seven years ago. That might be another thing too. Obviously women are graduating college at a higher rate than men. Uh, they're spending four to five, six years in school, amassing a massive amount of college debt. And sure that plays into it too. You know, which I could talk about college and why I think it's stupid, but they are, uh, you know, um, per the, the research, women in our country hold the most amount of debt. So there's something to be said here. There's a correlation in all of this. I don't think that this is necessarily a widespread millennial thing as it is perhaps more of something that women are experiencing on their own, independent, no kids, making money but blowing it and spending it faster than they're making it and not taking the right, you know, financial, uh, not making the right financial decisions to set themselves up to thrive and ultimately reach the goals that they want so they can have the life that they want. I don't think there's nothing wrong with uh, you wanting to have a luxury apartment or wanting to live here in downtown or whatever hot spot is in your city. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are forcing that to happen before you actually have the means to live it out, you're setting yourself up for a major L. I'm not going to go through this anymore. I think, you know, we've we've kind of really broken it down right here. If you're a millennial watching this, I would love to hear what you think. Uh, share your experiences down below. So, so I'm going to definitely go through it and comment back and all of that. I, I could tell you as a, as a millennial on the top end of the millennials, I, you know, I it really comes down to being financially disciplined. I haven't had issues. I've been very fortunate with careers, uh, making good money and all that stuff. You, you, you save some, you invest some, you are mindful of what you're spending and you can do it. You can do it. I understand that the climate has changed. I'm, I'm going through it as well, you know, living through our current economy. But if you take the right steps, I promise you can make it work in the vast majority of cases, especially if you have a full-time job, or even a second job. And, and if you are by yourself, you know, it's different if you got kids and, and maybe a family, but for those that are single, single millennials, something's not adding up. 
let me know what you guys think down below. Like I said, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this where we talk about and commentate across all these different things. And stop by my live streams. It's always a good time. You can check out more of my content on my other YouTube channel. Both of those links to the live stream and my other YouTube channel, my React channel, are down in the description below. Come through, uh, sub up, and I'll see you guys over there. Peace.